Hey guys, it's Kay. Now recently I purchased an Android TV because my high sense TV just packed up. And to be honest, I'm kind of glad it did because I've been enjoying the Android ecosystem ever since. Now a few apps like YouTube and Netflix come pre-installed, but for the rest, it's up to you. So for the best experience, you need a mix of music, video, productivity and system apps. So with that in mind, here's a list of my essential TV apps you need to install on your Android TV. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. So most Android TV remote controls come with a lot of buttons that are not Android TV focused and therefore are not very useful when using the Android TV platform. And that's where Button Mapper steps in. It essentially makes it easy to remap custom actions to your volume buttons and other hardware buttons. You can remap buttons to launch any app, shortcut or custom action with a single double press or long press. So here you can see I'm assigning a double tap on the home button to taking a screenshot. So now if I double tap on the home button, you get a screenshot. Pretty cool. And that's not all. Let's say I want to add some more functions to the volume button. I can customize it for media so that double tapping up or down will play the next track or the previous track. And it's as simple as that. Now file manager is essential for Android TV as you need to install APKs and manipulate files. And my favorite is FX File Explorer. And that's because the user interface is clean and modern and navigation is easy and fluid. And you get most of the features from the pro app version in the free version. And most importantly, no ads. Now there's some great little features included like cleaning tools, which lets you remove duplicate files and show large files, which is very handy if you're limited on space. There's also a whole load of options. You can connect to storage, you can mount and eject storage, and you can view your file system. Very handy if you're looking for something in particular. There's also a whole host of customizable options. You can choose to add a system status icon on the homepage, which lets you view your device status at a single glance. Now the other cool thing is you can change the themes of the app. As you can see, there's plenty of color themes to choose from, and there's an option to choose custom wallpaper and dim the home wallpaper, which all adds to a healthy user experience. Now you can also change how you view the files, there's a section, grid or icon view. You're also able to open new windows and then switch between them and close them individually, which is super handy if you're copying between folders. You can also split your view between two open windows, making it even easier to manage your device. Now, Send Files to TV lets you do exactly that. It lets you send files from your phone to your Android TV or device. Now you need to install the app on your phone and also on the Android TV and device and then just give it permission to read and write files on your device. Then you'll get the following options. Now, if it's installed on your Android TV or device, and you want to receive files from your mobile phone, just click on Receive, and then on your phone, install the same app, and then click on Send. And then navigate on your phone to the file you're going to send. Click on the file, and then select the device you're going to send it to. And if it's a small file, it'll be almost instantaneously sent. Now, large files can take a little bit longer, depending on the speed of your home network. So overall, another great little tool. Now, if you're like me, you used to love using Puffing TV Browser. It's got some of the best features around, but since they've started charging for just using it, I've started looking elsewhere. And that elsewhere is TV Web Browser. Now, it's a basic internet browser, but it covers all the bases. Navigation is simple. On the left-hand side of the screen, you have access to your favorite search engines, your bookmarks, and the settings menu, and that's all there is to it. Now, in terms of features, TV Web Browser offers integrated voice search, bookmarks, access to your browsing history, and user agent switching, customizable search engines, and an on-screen mouse pointer that you can control with a regular Android TV remote. And web browsing is smooth and fluid. Now it's important to note that it's not as polished as a Puffin TV browser, but like I said, it covers the basics. TV Usage is a digital well-being app, and it's got some pretty cool features. The first thing you can see is that it shows you the amount of time you spent on each of the apps on your device. Now my data here is pretty low, as I've just installed the app. Now this is a great app if you've got kids. It lets you set screen time for each individual app to limit their usage. And it goes one step further by letting you lock an app with a PIN number. Now one thing to note is that the app shows you the usage information for free. But if you want to lock an app or limit the usage of an app, you need to make a one-time purchase. So currently, it's difficult to switch between apps in Android, and moreover, see what apps are running in the background. Now, Background Apps and Processes allows you to see what's running in the background. 
Now the user interface is pretty simple and very straightforward to use. So when you open it up, you can see all the apps here at the bottom. Now the process to kill the apps is a bit long winded, but it gets the job done. Click on close all apps and this will open up the app info page for each app. And you just go through and force stop each app. Now it's not the quickest process, but it does work. I'm going to show you how to install any Google Play Store app on your Nvidia Shield. So this means apps that are not normally intended for Android TV. It's going to open up a whole new world for your Android TV platform on your Nvidia Shield. And you won't even have to sign into the Google Play Store. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so once you start up the app, you'll see it looks quite similar to the Google Play Store. On the top, there's a search bar so you can search for the app you're interested in. It's all very familiar. You just select the app you're interested in and it will bring you to the download page. You can scroll down and look at the screenshots and the reviewer's star ratings. And on the main page, if you select the more option, you can filter the results by ratings and number of downloads. Now to get every single app available to you on your Nvidia Shield, we need to update the settings. For example, if we search for Angry Birds, you'll find that you won't find it anywhere. This is because the Google Play Store is filtering down the apps according to your device. So if you go back to the home page and click on the hamburger menu and scroll down until you get to spoof. Now from here, we can spoof the Play Store into thinking we have a different device other than the Nvidia Shield TV, i.e. a mobile phone thus opening up the Play Store to the full Android experience and not apps just for Android TV. So currently our device is correctly set up as the Nvidia Shield TV. So I'm going to click on spoof device and this should give you a list of devices. Now I'm going to scroll down and choose a Google Pixel 2. Now I've chosen this because it is a Google device and it should have access to all the apps on the store. You'll then get this message that the setting will be applied after you restart the app. So if we click back to the home page and select account and just simply click on log out and then just click on login anonymously. And now if we go back to the home page and scroll down to spoofing, you'll see that we're logged in as a Google Pixel 2. So let's do that search again for Angry Birds. And now what you'll see is that all the Angry Bird apps appear. I'm going to choose Angry Birds 2 and just click on install and then open. The key thing is to spoof your device. To get this software store up, we first need to go to download and enter Aurora APK in the search bar. Now this will bring up a few results. You need to scroll down until you get to the Fdroid Aurora app. Now simply scroll down until you get to download Fdroid and just click on download and then click on install and install again and finally click on open. Here we need to click on the green search icon and now we just type in Aurora and we want to select the second one down and finally click on install. Click on install again and that's it guys, we can now open the Aurora App Store. Click on the next button, we now need to give it permission so click on ask, click on allow and then it will ask you how you want to log into the Google Play Store. I'll click on anonymous. And that's it guys, we are logged in anonymously to the Google Play Store and we can download anything we want. Just remember to spoof your device. Now I've also added the Aurora App Store to my Nvidia Shield's favourites apps. 